Hello there. In this lecture, we are going to work with the content type header. So let's see. I just uh, quickly load the person of interest application with the burp listening. And go to burp, allow and go to the proxy history and pick a request. This is the request to load the home page. And here in the response data, you could see that there's a header called content type, and it says that this is text HTML and also specifies the character set. So as the name says, the goal of this header is to to tell the browser what type of the content of the request. And then the browser knows how to deal with this data. So for instance, if it says text HTML, then the browser knows that it's HTML code and it can be simply rendered as HTML. If it says, for instance, that it's an image JPEG, then the browser will know that it can show it as, a, as an image. And if it says, for instance, that it's an application octet stream, then the browser knows that it, it cannot do anything with it, so it will just download it as a file. So it's a kind of communication between the browser and the server, which specifies how, uh, what to do with the, with the content of the response. The importance of the content type comes in when it's wrong. For instance, a text file can contain HTML, because why not? Or at least something which looks like HTML, because when it's downloaded with the right content type, then the browser will know uh, not to render it. It will just show it as text. However, if the content type falsely states that it's HTML, for instance, by saying that it's a text HTML, then the browser will do, the, do its best to, to render it as HTML. So if the text file contains anything which is similar to HTML, the browser will render that. And this could lead to cross-site scripting. But let's try this in the person of interest. First, try it with our local server. So let's go to slash bar www slash html and uh, create a file file here called innocent.txt and add some content this is just an innocent text file and after that, I add the little HTML, the usual suspect, or not. And I save it. So basically, this is, this is just a text file, but it happens to contain HTML code. Now, if we load this from our local server, so from localhost uh, slash innocent.txt, then you can see it is just so shown as simple text. Nothing happens with the with the HTML code inside. This happens because if we look it look at it in burp, the response states that the content type is text plain. From this, the browser knows that he doesn't need to do anything with this file, just uh, print it as text. Now, let's log into the person of interest. VP admin. And it's Vader force grip for the win. Yes, and go to media. Here, users can upload files to the web server, which can be then used in, in the post. So click on add the new, and then say select file. Go to file system and choose war 
uh, then www html and then choose the innocent and it was successfully uploaded here we can open it and click on view attachment page and then you can click on this this link and that's exactly what we were expecting this is just an innocent text file or not what happened here is that you can see that this is a direct url to the innocent.txt on the on the server so we download it directly and uh, if we go to burp here you can see the file is requested and in the response it says the content type says that it's a uh, text html and since the content type said that it's text html the browser will try really hard to render it as html and since there is actually html code inside the script tag will be rendered and by that the javascript is executed and that's why we got the pop-up window here so let's click on click on ok so what you can do or what the attacker can do is upload a simple text file with html and javascript inside then take the url and send this url to the to the user and if the user opens this url then in his browser the javascript will be executed and with that we are able to do cross-site scripting the advantage here is again that since this is a legitimate website the user will most probably will open the url although in this case we we need the user in the application because we have to log in to upload this file but it can be still used to attack other users in the application so it could be possible that this website is used used by different people and uh, the attacker only has limited rights in the application and he wants to escalate his privileges to administrator rights so he uploads a file with javascript then send it to an administrator and through that he can steal the cookie of the administrator uh, to hijack, hijack his session or even to change his rights in the application the wrong content type can be exploited in different ways not just with uh, cross-site scripting wherever you see that the, the content type is different than what's the actual content then it always makes sense to analyze it and try to figure out whether it's exploitable or not all right that's all for this lecture play a little bit with this content type try to figure out other ways how you could use it and uh, otherwise i will see you in the next lecture bye you have failed me for the last time admiral captain piet yes my lord make ready to land our troops beyond their energy field and deploy the fleet so that nothing gets off the system you are in command now admiral piet thank you lord Lader.